Welcome to the World Awakening Summit. I am your host, Shivani, and today we are talking deeply about business as divine self-expression and how to get into, not into, well, into the next <laughs> best step for you and how to get out of the funk. And today I have a very, very, very special guest with me. And if you need a dose of inspiration, <laughs> PJ is it. So PJ is a motivational speaker. He's a international transformational coach. And if you want to get results, he is your man. He is amazing because he has a disability that he, the people basically expected him not to live past seven years of age and you just blew everybody out of the water and decided bugger it i'm going to live <laughs> right absolutely <laughs> and i'm going to live really really well mm -hmm. so despite his disability he's sailing he's skydiving he's zip lining he's snow skiing water skiing he has a 10 degree black belt <laughs> founded two non-profit organizations and the list goes on and you can read <laughs> the full bio <laughs> underneath the interview <laughs> because he's just so amazing so welcome welcome pj oh, thank you, you so much my beautiful friend it's a real honor to be in your presence and to be here to support the women that you work with because i do believe that we're in a constant change universally but we're in a really fascinating time right now and i do believe that business is being is becoming a gateway for our divine expression and this is important because so many times so many people around the world are living out of obligation they're not living out of real true happiness they're not really living and behaving and expressing the way their soul wants to express and so they're not happy they're not like driven, they're not motivated. And so this particular summit is a fascinating angle on how we join the spiritual side and the physical side and combine those together to create profit, both financially and spiritually and emotionally and socially for everyone. It's truthfully a win-win-win situation. Mm. So let me lead you way back because I'm really, really interested when you basically said, well, I've decided to live and I've decided to live well. And mm -hmm. I'm going back to that place because what I see around me is that we are all, not all, but most of us are living as if we are slowly dying. Yes. So what was that? Were you born with it? Mm -hmm. Is this like pushing through challenges? Did something happen? Did you have an awakening? How did that happen for you, PJ? So great question. And without getting too deep in the weeds, I was born a pretty spiritual guy, um, you know, little guy. Um, I was talking with my mom about my impressions or my understanding of God before I was even in school. Um, and I wasn't raised in the church or the synagogue or the temple or the mosque. Um, any of that kind of thing. It just was part of my nature. And so when the doctors um, diagnosed me with the rare form of muscular dystrophy that I have, they said, he'll, if you send him to school, he'll die by second grade. And my mom said, it's his life. And if he wants to go to school, he gets to go to school. And she asked me, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to go to school, mommy. And so as a mom, just bravely, she took in a deep breath and said, okay, if you want to go to school, then you go to school. She wanted me to live right from the very beginning. I couldn't have been born to a more perfect mother. So right from the very beginning, I was given the choice and the option to choose and lay out my life the way I wanted it. And then there's this beautiful experience when I was between nine and 10, or not between, but nine and 10, where I would be getting myself dressed in the morning and I would yell out to my mom, okay, I'm ready for you to come out and get my and zipped. And she would yell back, okay. I'm busy, you keep trying. And I would say, okay. I don't know, I have a crazy voice, right? My story, my crazy voice. And so I would struggle and roll around on the floor and you know, trying to get the right angle to, um, to create leverage, to be able to snap my little pants and zip my little zipper and tuck my little shirt in. 
you know, and after 10 minutes, you know, while I'm struggling and fighting and sweating and rolling around trying to get the right leverage to get everything taken care of, my mom would be sitting in her bedroom crying yeah. because she knew that if she came to help me too soon, that I would only become dependent upon her. So what she instilled in me was the ability to try. After 10 minutes, she'd take a deep breath, blow her nose, wipe her eyes, and then open the door and walk across the hallway into my bedroom. And she would say, oh, you don't need my help. You got it all by yourself. And I would say, I can do it myself, mommy. And she'd walk away and walk down the hall and just leave me, you know, in that space, you know, because she knew that if I stayed, I might be, you know, have used the anger, the frustration to get all those, those things done. It might have spilled over into our connection. So she just let me live in that knowledge and that awareness of I can do it. And so for my whole life, she's always said, you know, what do you want to do? And let's figure out a way for you to do it. And my grandmother has even said, how are you going to let PJ do these things? What if he dies? My mom would always say, he, if he dies, he dies one, doing something he loves, and two, he dies with friends. And that, I think, is really important. What an amazing mom. Yeah, Thanks. because I think if we all have had instilled in us that we can do it and you just need to try, right? Yes. And yes, work with your frustration and not being able to do it, but you keep at it. Well, there's yeah. this thing too, like um, a couple of weeks ago, I gave a presentation to 500 people because I'm a professional speaker. And um, in, that pro in that presentation, the, there were three things that I wanted to focus on because I was uh, talking with Arizona healthcare providers. And so 500 people working in the healthcare industry. And I said, the number one thing that you need to do as a healthcare provider is you need to listen. Because if you're not listening, then the person that is your patient doesn't feel like there's any connection. Once you listen, then encourage them to do the things that they actually want to do. And then after you've been able to say, okay, I hear what they want. I've encouraged them to find a way to do that. And then the third step is to collaborate with them to make sure that there's a way for them to actually take action on what it is that they need and want to do. And we were specifically speaking about disabled people that they were working with or developmentally delayed um, uh, clients that they have. But this filters over into each and every one of us. It filters over into my own, my own space. Am I listening truthfully to my own soul's calling? Am I truly listening to what it is that my heart really desires to do? Am I actually um, encouraging myself saying, no, I can do this? Or is that unconscious, often unaware, uh, uh, subtle voice that we're not even consciously aware of saying, you can't, you'll never be able to do it, you're too weak, you don't know how, right? Is there something holding you back? And then once you realize that, oh, right? Like I, I hear this voice, I know what it is that I really truly want to do. And then you shift and you consciously encourage yourself, then you can find people to collaborate with and make it happen. And that really is how we create for-profit businesses, for pro or for-purpose businesses. Um, you know, business used to be all about making money. Now it's about how can we make a shift and a change? How can I use my business to truly be an expression from my soul, from the divine part of me. And that only comes because we listen to that deeper calling inside of us that says, I want something different than what I have. Mm. That's important. Are we listening? Totally. And so what would you say to listeners who have problems specifically with that, what you're just describing? So how do you know what is your soul? speaking mm -hmm. and what is the ego mind so great question right first let's look at this the all of the universe is built on contrast okay there's no up without down there's no in without out there's no light without dark okay it's all built on a contrast and so contrast yeah. creates contrast creates choice <clears throat> excuse me and so if i have a choice then when i make that choice and then, you know, making that choice leads to an action. The action leads to experience. The experience then leads to an assessment. Did I like that? Do I not like that? Do I want more of that? Or do I never want to do that again? And then in that moment, I make another choice. I take more action. I have another experience. And there's another assessment. So we are constantly in this process. We're just not often aware of it. So how do we know if it's my soul calling versus my um, ego mind? Simply. <laughs> is one bringing me pleasure and is one feeling like it's something I have to do, I'm supposed to do, 
right? I like I'm being told like if you don't do this, then these people are going to judge you. People are going to not like you. You're not going to su succeed. You're going to fail. But the other part of you is it saying like this this is where i feel free like i want to do this i want to help these people i want to express this feeling this emotion i want to go here i want to do that like this is there's a calling there's a drive there's an like there's a life inside of my chest inside of my heart area there's a tingling up my spine and in my brain that just i really want to do this and when there's that feeling of i really want to do this when we trust that when we courageously move in that direction and we say I don't want to live out of obligation and I don't know where this is going to take me, but I'm going to take a deep breath and I'm going to move forward and try. When we try, when we take action on something that appeals to us or when we take action on something that we feel like we have to do right out of obligation, both opportunities feed, us, feed data back to us. That data that comes back to us is something we can then assess. Did I like it? Did I not like it? Would I love to do that again? Or would I never, ever want to do that again? Either way, it gives us the information. And that information is just a compass that reorients us, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm a little too off, too far off course. Okay, yeah. let me do this. Okay, maybe I'm a little too far here, right? And we just do this back and forth. I don't like it. I like it. I don't like it. I like it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's amazing, right? Not so good. Really good. And so it's literally just about the assessment as we move. But it starts by feeling. What are you physically feeling? What are you emotionally feeling? Is there a sense of freedom and enthusiasm and excitement and like, gosh, I really wish I could. Gosh, I really want to versus oh, I don't really want to do this, but I feel like I have to. Mm. Eek, don't do this. Do this. Mm. Because every obligation is really the opposite of freedom. And also the more obligation you do, eventually you will create resentment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Another and the resentment may not be at the right person. Mm. The resentment may come out sideways and be at someone else. When yeah. really we are individually and independently responsible for identifying and listening to what it is that we want and then being courageous enough to move in that direction. Mm. Look, I can't lift my arms, right? I can barely even, I have 47% lung capacity after getting sick in March. Um, I can barely push my wheelchair anymore, but I'm still living and doing the things that I want to do. I just literally two days ago made a, um, a connection with a very uh, well-known television personality and offered to support his family in some way and said, you know what, we'll find a way to jump out of a plane together or do indoor skydiving. And I can't, I can barely move, but we will find a way because that might benefit this person to really break out of their, their mold and, ex, you know, be able to express the opportunity to fly and to, to do something that they have never thought that they could do to really break them through or help them through that, resistance, that fear, that, um, yeah, that limiting belief, mm. right? And I only tell you that because it doesn't matter where you are. What matters is where you want to go, mm. right? People are like, no, 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 we have to be present. Mm -hmm. Sure. It's great to be in the present moment. It's better to be in the present than the past or the worries and the what ifs of the future. But the problem is that being present is limiting still. Being mm. in the presence is liberating. And so I make an effort to live my life by being in the presence. Being in the presence is that spiritual feeling of life, vibrancy, connection to all things. And it's in that feeling, that, that sense of uh, uh, presence, that you are afforded the feeling of freedom. Mm. And it's in this freedom that we just feel like, oh, okay, I can actually breathe here. Mm. This makes sense for me. This mm. is what my soul really wants to do. And it's in that stillness inside of us, the stillness in our mind, the stillness in our body, the stillness in our heart, that we're actually able to hear the voice of the divine that is guiding us and pulling us in a direction. Mm. Yeah, you mentioned something really um, fascinating. You know, yes, it's important to be present. Yeah, you hear that all the time. Yes. And when we are making a decision about something or 
then it's really important to look at the future and the possibilities because quite often we stop ourselves because we are present. I haven't got the money. Oh, my children are still small. They need me. Yeah, whatever we tell ourselves instead of really looking, okay, what is the possibility here? What is the opportunity? And moving forward with that, at least in your mind. But yeah, absolutely. And let's make a very clear distinction between the conscious you and the unconscious you or the conscious us and the unconscious us. When the unconscious, when, when we hear ourselves say, I can't do it, I have to take care of the kids, I've got this obligation, I don't know if I've got the money to do it, you know, what's going to happen if, right? That's probably the unconscious mind mm. leading us to believe that we can't do something because it's coming from a place of fear. The unconscious mind is specifically designed to keep you alive. It doesn't care how it impacts or affects anyone else. It only cares about keeping you alive. And so while that's great and it's wonderful to have that on our side, it sometimes holds us back in this modern world from actually taking action and moving towards what we really want to do. But the conscious mind is drawing us towards because the unconscious mind says, I don't know, I'm a little bit afraid. I'm pretty scared. What about this? We can't afford that. And it's coming from a place of scarcity. It's coming from a place of limitation. Think about it like the, an anchor, an old ship anchor stuck deep into the ground, right? So a little part of the anchor is sticking out and a, a big chunk of the anchor is dug deep into the ground. That anchor is our past. And then see that anchor as your past, but then realize that anchors are usually connected to lines or cords or ropes or chains. So see a multitude of lines, ropes, cords, chains, going from that anchor all the way into your mind, into your mindset, into your memory, into your throat, into your heart, into your, um, into your guts, into your uh, sexual organs, into your vision, um, your desires, right? So all of those chains are linking you back to your past that's dug and stuck into the ground. So as you try to move towards what you want, boom, you get jerked and pulled back. Especially if you're like, I want that. And you start to run off and do what it is that you really want to do. As you run off and start to do what you want to do, all of a sudden, one of those chains or lines or ropes or cords is going to go talk. Ah! It's going to jerk you off your feet and pull you into the past. But that's good because the doors to your remarkable future exist in your past. The doors to your remarkable future exist in the past. So when you get out here and boom, that chain goes taut and you get jerked into the past, all of a sudden you get to get up and go, okay, what stopped me? Well, I can't because I don't have the money. I can't because I'm afraid. I can't because I have to take care of the kids. I can't because, stop for a sec, come back, okay? And look at that and go, okay, is it that I can't? Or is it that I haven't explored how? Mm -hmm. So when you start to explore how, I can't lift my arms. And the whole point of telling you that story a moment ago was I don't walk, I'm in a wheelchair, I can barely push my own wheelchair. The curvature of my, of my spine is so severe that currently as I'm sitting here, my belly button is touching the seat between my legs and then my back arches to bring me back and upright. If I were to right my belly, right, then my head goes way back. And so I can barely move my own body, but I find ways to do these things that I want to do. Why? Because I want these things. These are expressions of my soul. Mm. You don't even have to look at this, this uh, the summit doesn't have to be just about business. How are you living your life? So when you get jerked back into the past and you're like, oh, I can't because my mom said, my dad said, my teacher said, my brother said, this person I used to date said or did to me, and I can't, you know, you get lo lo uh, stuck back here, you get lost. But mm -hmm. the moment you stop and go, okay, hold on. What is this one thing holding me back? And you begin to look at it and untangle it and untie it or loosen it and then let it go from where it holds fast in your memory, if it holds fast to your voice, if it holds fast to your heart, right? If it holds fast to your, um, your sexual organs, if it holds fast to your guts, you know, so um, you don't feel like you're good enough or whatever, wherever you might feel it. The moment you start to realize this is what's holding me back in this moment and you start to really explore that and release that, and there's ways of doing that. The moment you release that and you set that chain down, the doors to your remarkable future just open and you can move forward towards what you want again 
further. And yes, there's going to be another chain that's going to pull you back. That's okay. You just turn around, identify where is it connected and what part of my memory, what part of my brain, what part of my body, what part of my emotional body is it connected? Where is it coming from? Why is it there? What is it trying to tell me? What's the lesson? Untie it, let it go. Turn around, you can go even further again towards where you want. Don't let these things that stop you, stop you. Let them be instead an alarm that says, hey, this is the first thing you want to let go of so you can move further. This is the first thing you want to release so you can go in the direction you really want to go. The universe is not conspiring against you Mm. or me. The universe is conspiring with us and just simply showing us what we're attached to and what we can let go of to be able to move more freely forward. Mm. It's always about letting go. Absolutely. And tell me, PJ, how do you personally work with clients? (laughs) So I personally work with clients through mostly through zoom sometimes one-on-one in person um and i work with couples but what i do with them more than anything is i listen and i ask them questions and i draw out what it is that's really important for them and then i listen to what their unconscious mind says because the unconscious mind doesn't lie so what the unconscious mind is going to tell me is yes i'd like to do that but i can't because i've never been able to and while they may just keep talking and not know that they've said it, it's my job to listen for that and say, hold on, did you hear what you just said? Let's look at that and explore that. And the more that they realize that they are subject to the limitations of their unconscious mind, the more that unconscious mind no longer is unconscious, but is starting to become revealed and conscious. They start listening to it. They find a way to hear it. And then in that process, they get to decide, that's not what I want. I want this instead. And they become empowered simply by the process of becoming more and more aware of what is actually going on below the surface of their conscious mind in the subliminal areas of their, or the, well, yeah, the subliminal areas or the subconscious areas of their mind. Usually the fight or flight protocol, usually within that amygdala area that's holding you back. And, you know, the moment that we look at that, And the moment we start to reveal that is the moment we go, okay, how can we get past this? How do I let this go? Mm. Right. And it's simply a changing of your beliefs. It's a reprogramming of the old programs. It's a realization that you actually have choice and options and opportunities. And then it's a choosing a conscious choice to Mm. choose something that you want a new program, a new belief and a new language that you want to carry within your own body, your own head. Mm-hmm. Then you move forward. I use a lot of NLP, neurolinguistic programming. I also have cognitive behavioral therapy training. You know, so I use these kinds of things to work with clients. Um, but, you know, more yeah. than anything, I listen <clears throat> and I encourage mm. and I collaborate I with them. It sounds wonderful because I think we need somebody that witnesses us quite often. Yeah. And I know I'm surrounded sometimes by people, they say, well, this is just who I am. You know, I've always been like this, right? And yes. (laughs) (laughs) And when, you know, it's the awareness, as you said, becoming aware of what you're actually saying, which gives you the doorway into your subconscious and unconscious but also it can change with the help of a professional and who's been there yeah, and, and has made the journey himself or herself. Well, let's look at what you just said, right? Well, this is just who I've always been. Let's add three words. Un, until, oh, well, three, up until now. <laughs> this is who I've always been up until now. Yes, up until now, this present moment, this might be who you've been. But let me ask you, is it who you the conscious you have been, or is it who your unconscious mm. has manipulated you to be? Have you bought into the lie? Have you bought into the scarcity mindset? Have you bought into the limiting beliefs? Has the unconscious mind held you back to protect you from being embarrassed? Has the unconscious mind held you back to protect you from overspending? And, you know, because every time you spend money, you have this feeling of, um, you know, somebody judging you for it, right? Is it the unconscious mind that's protecting you from getting involved in a relationship so you don't get your heart broken? 
Yeah. Is it you? You know, when people say, well, this is just who I am. Is it who you are? The conscious you? <laughs> no, it's not. Because mm. I, I strongly believe that ultimately we are here to experience ourselves joyfully. Me too. It's about joy and love yes. and freedom. and Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Smelling delicious smells, tasting delicious food, feeling things that feel physically good to us, emotionally good to us, right? Seeing beautiful things, hearing beautiful things, tasting amazing things. It's always about that contrast. Do I like this? Do I not like this? And it's this process of really... Um, appreciating what we're experiencing and let me just give you just a really brief like i'll give you a part of my um process to love okay when we start to experience things <clears throat> we uh, eventually we assess them right we appraise them we appreciate them the word appreciate comes from the word that means to appraise to appraise means to set a value for something do i like this or do i not like this do I want this again or do I never want this again? So it's in that process of appraisal, we appreciate and appreciate doesn't mean that we necessarily like it, but we appreciate meaning we identify it. We set a value for something. And then when we get so filled up with appreciation, like of good, good appreciation, we're like, I'm doing more and more things that I really like. And we're just filled up with honesty and that integrity of, I like this. I like what I'm doing. I like that I'm choosing foods that make me feel good. I like that I'm going for a walk at night because it allows me to be peaceful. I like that I'm waking up and meditating. I like that I'm saying yes to my soul's calling, right? And the more that you get filled with that level of positive appreciation, the more it's going to spill out because appreciation is an internal assessment. And when it spills out, it becomes gratitude. Mm. And gratitude is the outward expression of thanks. And then when we're in that state of gratitude where we get so filled up with gratitude, what happens is we pass through a little secret door, a tiny little door of a secret, special kind of humility. And we pass through that secret door of a special kind of humility. On the other side of the door is love. Love for ourselves, love for source, love for family and friends, love for nature. And it's in that love that we become more open and we circle back, the more open and receptive we become. The more aware we become, the more aware we become, the more we appreciate, the more we find that gratitude, the more often we slip through that secret door of humility, the more we enter love, the more honestly we begin to live. It's wow. about appreciation. Yeah. yeah. So if you appreciate what PJ is just <laughs> sharing, <laughs> he has a very special gift for all of you. Can you briefly talk about that, PJ? Because it's an amazing sure. opportunity. Oh, well, thank you. Sure, absolutely. I would love to be able to talk with anybody who's not where they want to be in their life right now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, you know, it's just simply that we sometimes just get stuck. We are sometimes too close to our own lives to be able to authentically say, this is what I need and this is what I want because we don't know. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it helps to be able to talk to somebody. So why don't we just simply jump on a phone call together and we'll be able to, you know, talk for 20 or 30 minutes about where you are and what's going on and hopefully help you to discover what really is in your soul's heart or in your soul that's really crying out and calling for you to move forward. Let's look at what's holding you back so that we can release it. Because until you're aware of it, it's mm. going to probably control you. So it's just a simple conversation with me. Yeah. yeah. Let PJ be your sounding board. The yes. um, <laughs> link will be underneath. Yes. Because, yeah, go and talk to somebody. And as he said, sometimes we don't see the trees in front of us, right? Yeah, um, totally true. Oh, yeah, and it's true. It's like, it's wonderful to get another perspective and a sounding board and somebody who is skillfully able to actually help you go deeper. And so look, let's look at this one more time really quickly. Listen, you need someone to listen and, you, and I get to help you learn to listen. You get to learn to listen to yourself. 
someone to encourage you. You get to also encourage yourself. Say, this is the where you want to go. And then collaborate. Sometimes it really helps us to collaborate with somebody else to find where we want to go and what we truly want to do. Don't think about me as a transformational coach, but rather a partner, okay? I want to make sure that whether I'm partnering with Shivani in this kind of summit or partnering with her, you know, in just a great conversation, you know, we're always partnering with, with each other. Whether you're in a relationship, whether you're parenting, it's always partnering. What are we partnering? We're partnering for growth, for your growth, for my growth, for our growth collectively. No one is separate. No one is alone. We are all connected. And there's no way for you to be disconnected. We might believe and feel like we are. But the truth is, you'll never be alone. But you will always have partners, people that want to lift you up and sing your praises and help you get where you want to go. Love it, PJ. Thank Do you, you have any last well, you've actually had a whole <laughs> verbiage of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> if I can leave with one quote, is it okay if I leave with one quote? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I tell my clients this all the time. Think your thoughts. Don't let your thoughts think you. Think your thoughts. Don't let your thoughts think you. Okay. That's powerful. Thank you so much, PJ. Truly. My awesome. pleasure. Love I love you and I love all of your guests. Love you too. Thank you. <laughs>